Hello YouTube and welcome to Resonance Arcade. I'm Chris and I'm going to be doing a review of Xenonauts today, an indie game released in 2014 by Goldhawk Interactive. This review comes in a little bit late, it has been well over a year and a half since the game was released, but I've only recently played it. I have had it in my Steam library for quite some time, and it's just one of those things that I knew was going to be quite complicated to get into, so I haven't really had the time until now. But, I must say, I'm glad I've played it. By now you probably know that this is an XCOM clone. Uh, now the developer doesn't like calling it an XCOM clone, they prefer to refer to it as a XCOM reimagining. And it very much is, it's essentially the same game but with lots of extra options and a hell of a lot of things to do in it as well. I mean I wasn't a, a huge fan of the original, I did play it uh, back in the day, but I am a big fan of the remake uh, XCOM Enemy Unknown and its DLC, XCOM Enemy Within. I've played those quite a lot and enjoyed them immensely. There's a lot of similarities. Now this came out roughly the same time as XCOM Enemy Unknown, but it's very, very different. Um, as well as having similarities, it's very different. Some of the key differences include uh, the setting. For example, Xenonauts is set in 1979 in an alternative history uh, around the Cold War era and XCOM Enemy Unknown is set in the present day. On top of that, Xenonauts, you have multiple bases, or you can have multiple bases if you choose to. It is obviously sensible to create multiple bases in the long run. And uh, in XCOM Enemy Unknown, you only have one the one base. And you don't really choose where to, you know, where to put it, whereas you can choose exactly where to put it in the world in Xenonauts. The more bases you have, the more land you cover, uh, the more UFOs you can capture, the more staff you can house, etc. Because you only have a limited number of slots in each base to build certain buildings. Even though both games have base development, research, workshops, resource management, staff management, uh, soldier um, configuration, etc. The, the, again, Xenonauts has a much more in-depth version of it. Uh, there's a lot of you know, a lot of lore, a lot of reading in both games. Uh, as you can see on the screen now, we've got alien biology up. It's something that's just been opened up for research in my game. And the more, you know, the more things that you research, the more things you unlock. All of those, all of those things are the same in both games. But Xenonauts manages to elaborate on it considerably, makes everything more manageable and makes everything more micromanageable specifically. I would say I've only played about three or four hours of the game so far, but there are three aspects to it. There is the simulation management, the resource management, which we're looking at at the moment, which takes place in your base, expanding your bases, creating additional bases, um, managing troops, resources, uh, buying and selling, etc, uh, etc. Et and then there's the air combat, which is based on the planes that you research and uh, develop etc and then there's the ground combat and the ground combat is based on the soldiers that you hire and configure and build weapons for and build armor for uh, based on your research so everything kind of links into everything else i said if you have played xcom enemy unknown a lot of it is familiar territory but it's still so so much more than than that research is unlocked in a similar way to in xcom enemy unknown you take down a UFO by sending out interceptors and various other ships. And then once you've taken the UFO down, you send out a troop transport. And the troop transport, uh, in this case, Charlie, that's on the screen, can initially hold up to eight people, eight troops. Which I'm sure you can upgrade later on in the game. But once you send that out, you then go into the ground combat. This leads me into another interesting difference between the two games. Once you've sent out your interceptors or sent out your troop transports, you send them out on a mission. They complete that mission, what whether it be take down a UFO or, or recover the UFO. But you can then, before they come back to base, which automatically happens in XCOM Enemy Unknown, you can then send them off, before they come back to us, you can send them off to take out another target if they've got enough fuel and enough ammo to do so, which I think is, is a pretty fundamental change. 
it lends itself to all kinds of different tactics and I think it makes the game a lot more open-ended you don't have to choose you know you're not forced down a single route and I like that I really like that now on the screen at the moment you can see I am moving my mouse around over North America trying to figure out where the next best place is to place my second base now at the moment you start off your second base with uh, with a central unit and that takes 10 days to build new bases are quite expensive I only have two in my current game at the moment and the second one is still building but once I've got that second base up and I've created a radar array that means I can then scan for UFOs around that area and at the moment until I build more transports and more soldiers and more uh, interceptors I can't really do much with that base apart from detect UFOs and I won't really be able to send my UFOs from my other base out because they'll run out of fuel before they get there so there's a lot of strategic management in this as there is in the air combat which you're experiencing right now so I sent out a Foxtrot which just has missiles and a Condor which has missiles and it has cannons on it uh, to take out a scout now that scout has now been knocked down but the way that I did it is once the Foxtrot had expended its missiles I sent that off home if I'd have left it around to keep fighting it would have kept trying to attack the scout but didn't have any actual ammo on it so it would have just died but luckily the interceptor was there to finish the job so this brings me neatly on to the ground combat the ground combat is very very complicated there's a lot to learn and there's a lot of mistakes to make I've lost way too many soldiers to to just making daft mistakes not putting them in the right place not really understanding the mechanics of the game um, leaving them out in the open by accident and having them swarmed by by enemies or even just get one you know one enemy shooting them and get a lucky shot the general principle is the same as XCOM enemy unknown you find cover you flank enemies you shoot everybody on the map until they're dead but there's uh, also another way to to win the map if you apparently i haven't actually tried this yet but if you get one soldier in the enemy spacecraft or the downed ufo they will uh, and you leave them there for five turns you will apparently win that map or you'll take over that ship i haven't tried it haven't been able to achieve it yet so hopefully at some point i'll be able to report on that Capturing an enemy ship opens up new research options, uh, gives you new aliens to perform biopsies on and new equipment to research, etc. And I have to say the most fun part is the combat. It's the figuring out what to do and where to put your guys. I mean, I enjoy the strategy management side of things, but I think the combat makes the game and it's, it was the same with XCOM though, it's the same with XCOM Com Enemy Unknown, it's, that's the interesting part. I don't know if the maps are procedurally generated, I do know that the enemies are placed on the map as you arrive, rather than in XCOM Enemy Unknown where they, they're, they're in a specific place but they don't find cover and start their offensive until you find them. Whereas in this game, they can they can start flanking you very quickly. I'm pretty sure there's going to be different scenarios as I play the game more, uh, and I'm really looking forward to those. Now, the aesthetic style is very minimalistic. It feels like you're playing with paper. You know, it's that isometric look, but it doesn't really matter to me that much. Uh, the gameplay is good enough to you know for it to support that. There have been a few times where I've accidentally shot my comrades. I've, I've ended up shooting a rocket into a spaceship but forgetting that there was one of my guys in the way the interface is a little bit a little bit flaky in places or a little bit hard to grasp but I think that's a learning curve thing more than anything overall I would highly recommend this game it's available on Steam for $18.99 at the moment although I did get it much cheaper in a, a humble bundle or a sale I can't remember exactly where I got it for or how much I got it for but it was it was much cheaper than that you can also get it on Desura for $24.99 for Mac OS and Linux and you can also get it on humble bundle I believe 
So thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this review, then please subscribe. We also have a Twitter page, uh, twitter.com forward slash Resonance Arcade. And we're on Facebook forward slash Resonance Arcade as well. We do a weekly podcast, which is a gaming talk show where we just talk about games we've played, games that we are anticipating, looking forward to. And we also sometimes do game streams as well. So thank you very much. We'll catch you later. Bye bye.